worship our Lord. passes all understanding, which has its source within the very nature of Father, Son, and Spirit, be with us as we meet to still our souls and join our hearts as one. May the gentle whisper of the God of peace speak to us through our worship, the reading and understanding of Scripture, and be the message of our lives as we leave this place. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, and I welcome you to St. Mary's Episcopal Church on this ninth Sunday after the Feast of Pentecost. 
Our service begins in your bulletin or on page 255 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song of praise this morning is Praise, Honor, and Glory as an insert in your bulletin. Praise, Honor, and Glory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abraham said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. And then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Psalm for this morning is Psalm 33, verses 12 to 22, and it's in the prayer book on page 626. Let's read alternate versions. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people he has chosen to be his own. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze on all who dwell on the earth. There is no king that can be saved by a mighty army. A strong man is not delivered by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him and on those who wait upon his love. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us as we have put our trust in you. Good morning. 
A reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for whom For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possession and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that will not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat and will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But but know this, if the owner of the house had known at the hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. 
you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you this morning in the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. We hear in today's gospel Jesus, Jesus used the term thief a number of times, coming as a thief in the night, and it reminded me of a story that I thought I'd share with you. There was a gentleman who decided to uh, impart in a life of crime and was going to burgle someone's house, so he broke into the window and climbed through the window and was in the living room and he clicked on his flashlight and started shining it around. And all of a sudden he heard a disembodied voice come from inside the house. Jesus is watching you. He immediately froze and turned his flashlight off. Who could be in here? Hearing nothing, he turned it back on and started shining it around and found a shiny Rolex sitting on the, the coffee table by the couch and went to pick it up and put it in his bag. Then he heard the voice again, Jesus is watching you. He stood in his tracks again. Still nothing. So he turned the flashlight back on and shone it around the living room and was heading toward the big screen TV and started taking the wires out of the back so he could take that when he heard once again, Jesus is watching you. So he takes the flashlight and shines it all around the living room until finally... He sees in the corner of the living room a parrot in his cage. Jesus is watching you. So he goes over to the parrot and he said, did you say that? And the parrot says, yeah, I was trying to warn you. He says, warn me? Who do you think you are? And the parrot says, Moses. <laughs> Moses? What kind of a stupid family names their parrot Moses? The same kind that names their Rottweiler Jesus. We need to be prepared. We need to be attentive to what's going on around us because we never know who's watching. We never know what might be coming at us. And so that's an okay joke for this gospel because it reminds us that we always need to be aware of what's going on. And Jesus is making that point to us today. We need to be aware that he is coming. That there is going to be a time that we meet our Lord and Savior. There's going to be a time that we meet our Lord and Maker. Now, when we think about this generally around Advent time, we think about the second coming of Christ. But I think Jesus meant something else in this particular reading because we all have a day and a time that we are going to meet our Lord and Maker. Not just at the end times, but just at the end of our earthly pilgrimage. We heard in our psalm today and in our readings about that time that we leave the earthly plane and go to our heavenly plane, and there will be for us a time that eternity invades our earthly space. And we go to the next place, the place where we're meeting with our Lord and Savior. But Jesus is cautioning us today to be prepared, to be ready for that time. Because how do we want God to find us when that day comes? What do we want God to see in us? Well, I think for most of us, as we hear in our gospel today, God would like to find us having done the work that he set us out to do, or at least making good progress on it if we're not finished. He never asked for perfection, just that we work hard, that we're doing his work, that we're being kind and gentle and forgiving, that we're doing those things he put us on this planet to do. So let's hope he find us, finds us that way, 
actually working toward the kingdom. And we hope when God comes down to us that he finds us at peace with each other. The one commandment Jesus gave us is to love each other as he has loved us, to love one another. Not live in anger and live in strife and live in enmity, but to love one another, to be kind and gentle with one another. We hear that old phrase, never let the sun go down on your anger. That's particularly true if we don't know when our last sunset's going to be. We need to make sure that we're at peace with people while we have the chance. And finally, when God find it, finds us, I hope that he finds us at peace with himself. So many people find themselves angry with God or upset with God or thinking God is wrathful. They look at him as a distant God that's here to, to punish us. Instead of looking at God as a father, as a father figure who wants nothing more than to love us, to take him into his gentle arms, and to hug us, to hold us as his children. That's the picture we want of God when God comes for us, is a God that's there to love us, not to punish us. So we need to work on being ready. We need to work on being ready in our heart and soul for when that time comes, because as Jesus says today, we do not know the day. We don't know the hour. We don't know when it'll be that our name is called up yonder. So we need to always be ready. And he flushes that out a little bit when he talks about the, the two stewards today in the gospel. And there's, there's two things that they do that should make notice to us because they're two common mistakes that we make just as part of our human nature. And the first is we notice that when the Lord of the mansion leaves, one of the slaves is hard at work, but the other one's kind of lazy and laid back and not doing anything, right? When the cat's away, the mice will play. We kind of maybe have that attitude sometimes too, particularly with God. We maybe don't feel him particularly close to us at a moment in time, so what do we do? We drift away slightly. It's just a little sin, right? It's just a little bitty sin until it becomes more, until it becomes more. And so we need to be diligently at work, diligently in contact and communication with God so that we don't drift away, so that we're always working toward his kingdom because it is so easy for us to fall away. It is so easy for us to get distracted and to, to draw a line between our Christian life and our secular life. But if we are true Christians and we truly believe in God, we know that God is all around us all the time, everywhere. Even if we don't necessarily feel that closeness, God is there with us. God is watching our faithfulness. God is seeing how we do. Maybe we need a parrot on our shoulder that tells us God is watching you so that we'll stay awake. And what that tells us is we need to be faithful even in the little things in life. Because to God, there's nothing that's little. And we need to be faithful to God's presence, even when we don't necessarily feel it. Because the truth is that God is never absent from, absent from us. God is always there around us. God is always with us. And the other mistake we make, like the, the bad steward here, is that we always think there's going to be time, right? Ah, I know I've got to make my life right with God, but I've got a big project coming up, and then it's Thanksgiving and Christmas, and I'll work on that in January. But we're not promised that time. I don't think any of us was born with a birth certificate with an expiration date on it. We don't know when that time is going to come. So we need to spend every day, every day being aware of God's presence, working in God's kingdom. Because the truth is, God is always around us, watching us. We might not see the steward, but he's still there. So we still need to be doing the work. We still need to be active in what we're doing. 
Because we're not going to be able to say, hold on just a minute. Let me repair these relationships and let me get closer to God real quick before you come. Because when the knock comes, the knock comes. And we have to answer the door. So the time for preparation of our hearts and souls is now. The time to be living a godly life is now. The time to be doing the things that he's taught us to do. Being loving, being kind, being forgiving, forbearing others. The time to do that is now. Those aren't tools that we keep in a belt for an emergency. They're how we're supposed to be living our life every single day. In the kindness of Jesus Christ and the love of Jesus Christ. And in the glory of God. And it's not something that we just come and do for an hour and a half on Sunday. It should be every minute of every hour of every day that we're alive. We should be in connection with our God. Working in his kingdom. Doing the things that he's told us to do. Because our time will come when we'll hear that knock on the door. So we need to prepare ourselves. We need to get ready. And we do it not out of fear. We do it out of longing for our God. We want to be with our maker. We want to be with God. Do we not? So we need to prepare ourselves for that. Think about this for just a minute. We spend probably a third of our adult lives having kids and preparing kids and growing kids and preparing kids for the world. And then we spend another part of our life hoping to God that they grow up and get out of the house so we can have some peace of quiet. But then after that, in the last part of our life, all we do is hope that they'll come and visit us. Right? And spend a day with us or two or maybe a season. And when we find out they're coming for Thanksgiving or Christmas, what do we do? We go into preparation mode. We clean the spare bedroom. We play towels out in the bathroom. Maybe we make a dinner or two that they like they haven't had in a while. Maybe we find something fun to do in town that we can do with them to enjoy the time. And when we know they're coming, we stay up late. We don't go to sleep. We stay up until they come and knock on the door. So we can swing it open wide and give them a big hug and a kiss. Because we haven't seen them in so long. Because we love them. Because we long for their presence. Why should our relationship with God be any different? We love him and long for him too and he's already told us, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm going to knock on the door. We need to be preparing for him just like we would be preparing for our children or our grandchildren or whoever might be coming to visit. Because we know the knock is coming. We just don't know when. Probably because he's going through Atlanta. <laughs> Who knows how long that delay is. But the point is we don't know. So we stay alert. We stay prepared. We stay ready to receive him when the knock comes. That's what Jesus is calling us to do. It's not something we can delay and it's not something we can put off. It's something that we have to actively be doing each and every day from this day forward. And I'm not talking about a separate life that we go into a monastery or hide in our house. We got to do this in, in the middle of our everyday life. We have to do this in the midst of everything else we're doing. Look for and feel the closeness of God. You know, the theologian Martin Luther, Luther once said, even if I knew that Jesus was coming tomorrow, I'd still plant an apple tree today. We have to go ahead and live our lives. We have to live our lives to the fullest. But what we fail to understand is the fullest usually means in close connection to God. That's when our life is the absolute fullest. That's when we're full of love and joy. When we're living lives for our God and for our Savior. So be prepared. 
Be attentive. Somebody's watching you. They're watching to see what you do. The knock is coming at the door. But we don't know when. But what we do know is that he made the promise that he's coming. And so we need to be ready to welcome him. Please stand as we reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found in your bulletin or on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of the people this morning are uh, form three, as is found in your bulletin, or page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us kneel before God as we lift our voices to him in prayer. Father, we pray for our, your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Dabney, our bishop, Jim, our rector, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for the saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Gracious God, I lift up to you especially St. Mary's Episcopal Church and her people, beseeching you to guide, guard, and protect us and give us your grace and blessing as we do your ministry in this place. We lift up to you all of those on our parish prayer list, those preparing for or recovering from surgeries, those in need of ongoing healing, and those with urgent care this day, most especially Dara Morgan, Tom Parks, Lee Conley, Bill McGavern, John and Heather Sutherland, Peggy Fetch, Grayson Edwards, John Harrison, Logan Hacker, Barry Court, Judy Henry, Larry Schwartz, Regina Ballou, Ryan, Kyle Peterson, Ted Benz. 
Are there others to be named? Gracious God, we also lift up to you in thanksgiving this day, Amanda Price and Kaylee Hicks, beseeching you to guide, guard, and protect them in their pregnancies and to fill their hearts with your joy and peace as they bring new life into the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, Help us to ask only what accords with your will. And those good things which we dare not, or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now using the confessional on page 360 of the Book of Common Prayer, let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. And may Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. You have a number. Well, first of all, welcome. So good to see you all. Thank you for being here this Sunday. It's nice to see so many bright, shining faces this morning. We thank you all for being here. Uh, regulars and visitors as well. Thank you for coming to join us in worship today. Um, there are a number of announcements on the back of your bulletin, but there are a couple I want to highlight to you because they're important. Some might be in there, some might not. Um, next Sunday, the 14th, as you heard me pray for today, we are going to have a baby shower and shower with love, Reagan and PJ Price, and Amanda, as Amanda uh, gets ready to bring a new baby into the world in September. So um, we're going to have the shower over in Freeman Hall. We're going to start between the two services, so you can come early and join us, or we're going to continue to do it after the service, so you can come after the service. So whatever works for you, and if you have a heart to bring something for them, we're suggesting like diapers and wipes and just regular stuff because they probably already have with their parents and stuff enough big stuff but you know how diapers go through with new babies so a pack of diapers can go a long way so uh, just something like that if you feel the need if not just your presence I'm sure will be a present for them so come join us and help us show them some love as they uh, as they bring a new baby into the world um, Munch Bunch for those of you that have done it before you know how much fun it is we, it's a small group dinner uh, through the church um, that you sign up for and you kind of rotate houses around during the thing and go to different people's houses but it's a it's a great way to get to know people better to get to know people out of the scant hour that we have together on Sunday and really get to find out what their journey is and how what brought them to Christ and to St. Mary's and just how their life is going so um, I, I really can't say enough about this program how wonderful it is to be able to come together and share a meal or even do like a coffee and donuts, whatever it is you, you want to do. Um, it's just the get together that's important and the sharing the time together that's important so that we can get to know each other as Christian brothers and sisters instead of just people that we see on Sunday. So um, there's a sign up hall on the St. Mary table right when you go into the parish hall next to the coffee, conveniently located. So um, 
Feel free to sign up. We're going to be doing it over the next couple of weeks and probably draw names at the end of August so that we can start in September and do this through September, October, and November and be done by Thanksgiving. So, because I know people travel and stuff, but I do commend that to you. Um, most of you should have gotten a uh, link by your email this week to sign up for uh, coffee through the Sign Up Genius. It's really simple to do. Um, you just hit the sign up button and there's a big grid with all the different times and coffee hours that you can sign up for. Put your name in there and sign up for one and you can see when someone's not doing it and there's all kinds of instructions in there. So if you have a heart for doing a coffee hour or you're in a group that wants to do coffee hour, even better, uh, you can sign up for your group to do it. So um, we just ask you to continue that because we love our coffee hours, we love our time together and would like that to continue. Um, you'll also see a big pile of school supplies over in the parish hall. That's for Cox Elementary. And we are doing our school supply drive for them again this year. Um, for those of you who don't know, Cox Elementary is our local elementary school. And uh, they are, I wouldn't be, I think, shading it to say they're a rather po poor school. Um, they often do without. Um, they're a, a high percentage of warm lunch people, and they get, most of they get their meals at school. And so anything we can do to help them and help their learning abilities is a plus. And so, uh, you know, I implore you, if you have a heart for it, to go buy stuff, they're just regular school supplies. Um, they have, don't have a list out for us, but you know, just think anything that you'd use at school, you know, uh, pencils, paper, that kind of stuff, they can certainly use it. So I commend that to you. Um, finally, all of our weekday services are still up and running. So if you're looking for something to do during the week to get a little closer to God, on uh, Wednesday morning, we have a women's Eucharist and breakfast that begins at 6.30 a.m. And then on Thursday, we have the same thing for men on Thursday, uh, Eucharist and breakfast that begins at 6.30. Then at 10 o'clock is our Bible study. We spend an hour studying parts of the Bible and then follow that with the Eucharist at 11 o'clock. So if you feel the little need for a little Jesus during the week, come to St. Mary's and we can do that for you. Uh, finally, I am in severe shortage and need of acolytes. Um, as most of you know, uh, Dick Eddy, who does a lot of our acolyting, is up north. And Sarah has just had a baby. And so I'm down to Claudia, really, with acolytes. Um, thankfully, my beautiful bride, Sharon, has agreed to do it this morning to help us out. But the honeydews that are costing me are too much. <laughs> I need someone to sign up for this so that, you know, I'm not working for the rest of my days. So um, if you have a heart for that for service, it's very simple to do. Um, I can train you how to do it very well, but we really need some folks to step up and help us with that because it is a vital part of the service. You're the crucifer, you light the candles, and, and you really kind of help prepare the service for what we're doing. So it's not a hard task, but it's an important one to the life of the church. And so I implore you, if you or you know somebody who might be interested, tell them about it and tell them to see me and we'll get them all trained up. And I think that's it. So birthdays. We have a number of birthdays to celebrate this week. And has anybody missed a birthday that needs to come up? and be blessed. You can do that as well because I know a lot of people travel during the summer. But this week we're celebrating Joanne Cook, Cecil McGavern, Katie Frankfurt, Karen Menard, Mike Smith, I know that he's here, Brian Teston, Jock Waitman, Jeff Phillips, and Randy Phillips. So we're pre-blessing you. Okay, very good. Man, this is like the front line of a football team. <laughs> we just need a good running back. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for all the days of our lives, all of the days that we get to walk in your light and love. And we thank you for your presence with those each and every one of those days. And we lift up to you all of those that celebrate birthdays, either this day or coming up. Most especially these, your servants, Mike and Ben and we just ask you to be with all of them who celebrate birthdays on this special day. Let it be a day full of love and laughter and your abundant grace and blessings. And gracious God, let them celebrate it with friends and family and those who bring joy and happiness to their life that they might remember this happy occasion. And as always, we just ask your continued protection and guidance for them as they walk with you. And we ask this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. And stick around. 
because you're traveling, right? Real quick, uh, anniversaries. We do have an anniversary for Mike and Karen Menard. And is there anyone else who's missed their anniversary lately that needs to be blessed? All righty. Well, let us pray for Mike and Karen. Gracious God, we thank you that you give us spouses, partners, those that we share our lives with, those that we can lean into in our time of need and lean into us in theirs so that neither of us should fall. Gracious God, I ask your blessing on Mike and Karen as they celebrate their anniversary this week. We ask you to be with them on their special day and make it full of your grace and blessing. Gracious God, let them celebrate joyfully with friends and family and those that they love as they celebrate their union together. But also let them take a moment to, to focus on you as the heart and soul of their union and realize that you are present with their marriage. And gracious God, we just lift them up to you in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Betty, come on down. He's coming. Anybody else traveling that need traveling mercies? You need those mercies. All right. So take a good look because uh, Ben and Betty are going to be away for a while. They're going for about six, seven weeks, something like that. Okay. Going up north to visit friends and family, which we love doing during the summer. But let's pray for them that they make it up there safely and are safe up there and come back to us safely. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this big, wide, wonderful world and all the beauty that you reveal to us in it. And we just thank you for the freedom to explore and to, to go to different new places and even to old places where our heart resides. And I ask you to be with Ben and Betty as they travel in the coming weeks, get them safely to their destination, make their pathways straight, their delays short, and their obstacles few. And gracious God, bless their time together with family and friends as they go to meet those that they yearn to see and just be in the, be in the midst of their discussions and in their time together. And most importantly, bring them back safely to us. Guide, guard, and protect them on the road and in all they do. And we ask this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. A blessing to you both. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Milton, do you want a birthday blessing since I missed you last week? No? Okay. Very good. Well, this is the time of the service that I say if this is your first time at St. Mary's, if you are here every now and again, or if you are here week by week, my brothers and sisters, welcome. You are home. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
This morning we'll be celebrating Eucharistic Prayer B as is in your bulletin or on page 367 in the Book of Common Prayer, Eucharistic Prayer B. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. 
by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come you who have faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here. Just a reminder as we proceed to communion, we will have a intinction chalice uh, with Deacon Ben right off of the altar here. So if you wish to intinct with the wine, simply uh, as soon as you get your wafer, you can stand up and walk over to where he is, and he will be glad to intinct with you. Otherwise, we'll assume that you're taking from the common cup around the altar rail. Thank you. 
Using the post-communion prayer in your bulletin or on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let him live in our hearts that we might live our life for you and always be alert and prepared for your knock. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.